Programming can be a difficult thing, and trying to make a game can be very overwhelming, especially when you're stuck in a tutorial hell on trying to make a piece of software that you're not too sure about. Trying to follow a tutorial like this is very time consuming and can get to be a lot of people burnt out and confused. And this playlist has 57 different videos to go through. And you can see that the first episode, 116,000, but you can quickly see the following episodes. Views drop off as people are find it difficult to either understand or retain the attention. A method of learning that I like to use that has been working very effectively for me is a component based learning approach. The idea is that you have a big piece of software or game that you're looking to make and then you split it up into different features and you evaluate how you're going to need to implement those features. If we look at our Sardi Valley example and we split that into components then we can imagine it's sort of like this. Here's a sort of simple version of looking at it but we know that we need a farming system so that means a growth cycle, day and night cycle, different crops to grow and sort of the different animations as well. You also need an inventory to organize the items that we are collecting such as these the different tools that we're going to use and that the player can upgrade the inventory or move them items around in a different order one is for collision detection if that's between the npcs so they can be talked to that's also the crops that you're going to harvest and also not letting the player walk out of bounds and through objects they shouldn't do and Lastly, another example would be the tile map, so the way that the tiles are rendered, so if the player is behind a tree that they're going to not appear in front of it, but also if, if the way it renders on that the corners are nice and smooth. If we were to start and program the system straight away, then we may end up at a dead end where we are unsure how to implement a certain feature because we've never implemented it before. So we may start with our farming system and we find it fine, and then when it comes to we need to implement the inventory system, we'll actually you've never done that and you find it a bit overwhelming and maybe perhaps it's too difficult at your current skill level. The same for collision detection, you can't really test the collision detection until you have some sort of tile map loaded. If we look at the inventory system, from a customer slash user's perspective, it seems very trivial and easy that it's just the straight displays items that can be used and dragged around. But from a programmer's perspective, it's actually very difficult. You need an array to store these items and inventory system first. You would then need to have uh, some sort of description like a structure for all these items so what they do their description how much you can stack them by so if it can be uh, you can hold a maximum of 64 at one time the, the rate of the order of the needs to change so if the player is able to drag around this where they put the items so they can organize it that array needs to account for that and update it for each position and uh, prevent duplication so you can't have players have a duplicate of an item that is not meant to be duplicated for example it, it needs to be its own new array slot item for example you need to somehow render this array while it retains its order so it's in the in the correct way you've the players moved it so and it updates for that and some sort of limits need to be added with the size so if the player can have a maximum of 30 unique different items then that needs to be accounted for and if you're using a language that requires memory management you've got to somehow manage it so you don't have any memory leaks Taking this component based approach means that we don't actually start making the game yet. We're first just going to try out and build the collision station in a sort of isolated system, sort of in its own software and to see what approach best fits us or one that we can implement and learn from. It also shows just the importance of planning your project and how you're going to build it and what features you're in. Prevent things like scope creep because you may want, hey, a bit of nice juicy procedure generation but you've never actually implemented a sort of procedure generation in this way and so you've this can help limit your scope thinking that hey i'm not ready to implement that yet yet so i'm going to only have these features in and reduce the scope of your game so you can actually finish something it also gets you thinking of actually there's more layers to it if you think about it well if we have collision detection and we have multiple enemies on the screen when i check to hit if the enemy if i hit the enemy or the enemy tries to hit me Rather than trying to loop through every single, every entity that's on the screen, you may want to split it into some sort of spatial partition. And with the inventory system, well, in Stardew Valley, you have these static chests that also have their own inventory. So you need to figure out, hey, where's that stored and how am I going to store it? So overall, you can imagine how you may actually want to rethink this. Maybe the st that farming Stardew game is perhaps not the greatest place to start. And then maybe start with a smaller project. That's either focus on individual things or you take that component based approach, learn each component until you feel confident enough that you can then implement and build your Stardew Valley game. The other advantage is that it makes the code modulable and reusable. If you take this component based approach, then you have this small component that you can then actually use. 
if for example you have a pathfinding system that you want to implement you can then build this as a sort of package that you test and you run it's like hey i understand how to use it now and then that code becomes very reusable because it's in a sort of abstract way if you think about it if you were to program it within your project it may become quite messy and hard coded and ingrained in making it difficult to reuse in a different project you may come across like i said it helps you plan for a big piece of software for all the software this approach is less so important because it's something that is either only contains one or two components that you will learn or implement within it that aren't too difficult something very large like again Stardew Valley has many different features going for it it helps you think about what you're going to need in that game before you start programming and, and you end up in that dead end where you waste a lot of time and you have to abandon that project it's why game design documentation can be very important to you as a developer especially as a team when you're learning those components it can help you understand how difficult that feature again may be difficult like i said with when it came to collision detection collision detection can actually be very simple and trivial especially for a tile map just simply check if the two cubes that are intersect collide but if you're looking at a lot of entities on the screen you have to start looking at some sort of spatial partitioning some way to perhaps possibly optimize the code so you're not looping for ent from through many entities such as implementing a ke tree and that can get very complex depending on your skill level and in return maybe you find it too difficult to do that KD tree for now at your current skill level so you decided to reduce the scope and instead just focus on something that you already find really fun that's niche and you just excel at that part and you really learn whatever little component that you have in within there and I think it will help make your project codes or software code more readable if you take this approach if you try and learn all these components while building it the code may become a bit messy and because you're sort of implementing trying to learn it on the fly and so stuff may get hard coded it may get a little bit sloppy it functions but it's not that readable and if you were to go back back to it in maybe a year or few, even a few months you may look and read it and not quite understand what you've implemented rather than taking this component based approach again where it's sort of in these nice little chunks that you can just use over and over again this goes hand in hand with component based software engineering which is building software with components but this is sort of like building software like lego bricks each brick is a piece of feature for the code that you're going to implement and you put that in and that may need to go in a certain spot that relies on a different brick to, to build which is a different feature the example used on wikipedia is the with a checkout so in order for someone to check out they must then process their credit card in order to make the, the payment my videos have this approach as well you can see that how to do pixel perfect 2d collision as its own repository that is just focused on that specific issue that people can also check out but also it's very useful for me as well this has a very abstract view of the code that i can just reuse in multiple different projects same goes for the procedural racetrack that i did as well that ha also has its own repository where it's just focusing on that specific issue and one that I'm quite proud of is this pathfinding that I had. I have a nice little example also on how to use it and an image to just demonstrate it. And this code is just in a nice little package for me to then reuse anywhere else. You may actually see some similarities of this approach with in school and in a university, for example, you may have a module for learning sorting algorithms. And in this case, you may just be giving a set of data and you're told to implement a sorting algorithm to sort it into an ordered certain state. That would be taking this sort of component based approach as you're not really building actually any piece of software you're just building a little application that's going to sort through it and that can make the code very reusable depending on the context rather than just say hey you need to make this video game or this piece of software that does this this and this and this and so that's everything i want to cover i really like this approach and it helped me learn a lot about different algorithms that I want to implement into projects without getting lost within that project or hitting that dead end. And so I want to ask, what's your opinion on this? Are you planning to use this? Do you already use this? Or what is your method of learning different, I guess, algorithms or programming systems? So please do subscribe and also comment that down below about your opinion on this. And I'll see you in further videos.